I would just like to say to the audience, the administration has put up with letters from these guys every 18 minutes for about 11 years to get to today and have always graciously forwarded them to me so I knew that everybody was waiting. What's our next step? Because first we started the college program, then after the college program ended, these guys helped run the college program, and then we figured out a bachelor's program, and then we started classes, and then we figured out how to pay for the college program, right? We started and then figured out how to pay for it after. And then today, 19 men are graduating, and it looks to me like every single one of them is on the dean's list. When I get the call from the folks at the college, there are a ton of people that are not with us today that help get you to this point. You see the professors, you see the faculty, you see the administration, but there are people in the background, in the register's office, in the bookstore, that believe in what you're doing. And that call saying, hey, I think there must be a mistake, they've ordered not just 19 caps and gowns, but 19 honor courts. I said, no, there's, there's no mistake. 19 students are getting there uh, on the Dean's List. An incredible career. <laughs> While I'm traveling the country on the National Board, um, getting congratulated, getting congratulated on the amazing work that we're doing, it's really you guys that are doing the hard work. So I'd like to, on your behalf, get congratulated around the country, but I know every day in the trenches, you're the ones that are crafting that textbook. You're the one that are studying in a cell block that wasn't made for people to study. This place is not built and constructed for conducive academic work, but you, against all the odds, with an administration and a team of officers that care, have gotten us, gotten us to this point and gotten you to this point. So I want to just take one second to thank the administration and all the officers that have made this possible. <laughs> and while we thank Jeff Trustiano and Superintendent Kaiser and his team for all this work, the one person that's not here is Deb Mallon, who when she came here before moving on to Sing Sing at the Denver programs, I called to congratulate her. And as many of you know, she wasted no time saying, would you consider getting a college program here? And I thought, ah, we can talk about it. My next phone call came from Barbara, one of our board members, who you all know because she beat you guys up in class. <laughs> and she said, what if, she tricked us, she tricked all of us. She said, what if we just did one class, just to see how it goes. And now, seven years later, you're getting your bachelor's degree. Thank you, Barbara. The Department of Corrections, the folks from the Central Office, our college faculty administration from St. Thomas, our newest college partner, the Hudson Link team. Can I just ask the Hudson team to stand for one second?
your diligence, your perseverance, and your love of knowledge. I thank as well your professors, who literally went the extra miles to inspire you with wisdom and understanding. The faculty stand as beacons of hope that dispel the darkness of ignorance. Glory in this accomplishment, you earned it. Congratulations. I'd like to end, uh, ask Daniel Cummings to come up and open us up. Dear God, please bow your heads and join me in a short prayer. Merciful creator and lover of all things, who is known by many names, we gratefully acknowledge your presence here with us today. Thank you for this beautiful day and the opportunity we have to gather here and celebrate with these students of St. Thomas of Aquinas College. We ask that you bless these gathering, this gathering as we confer these degrees. Please help us all to remember the importance of knowledge and what can be accomplished with it, that we use it to illuminate others. Finally, we ask that you bless those who will come after. May they follow these students' examples. We ask this in the Lord. Amen. 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 Before I pass this on to our keynote speaker, I do want to just say a very special thanks to the family members. You guys do a ton of work to get to this point. Academically, the standards are incredible, what you have been wanting. But we, and I say this as someone that sat in that seat just like you did. Know that none of that is not possible without the family support that's sitting behind you. Can we just take one second and thank our family? And for the family members that think it's no big deal to support someone while they're being incarcerated. That means it's really important to say when you're like that. I was in the ninth grade when I got arrested. My mom and dad were retired New York City cops. They thought my life was over, but they also thought their life was going to be impacted in a way that they were not going to be able to control. The fact is, when we come to prison, we don't come alone. We bring our families with us. You are here today serving a time for something you did wrong. But you're using that time in a way that will change the direction of your life forever. Even for those men that don't leave this place. I originally thought when we created this program at Sing Sing 21 years ago that it was about one person getting one degree and changing the life of that one person as they re-entered society. But the fact is, since we've had some students that have not gone home in 21 years, this is as impactful for those students that stay here, that continue to run it, that continue to impact this world here that they're living in. So I thank the students that have gone through this program, not just for the work they've done to help change their direction, but also for the guys that have continued to do it for the rest of the population here, that don't yet know what you already do, that college is bigger than one person. One night.
Ms. Mami Lincoln Chief. And although they're not present, I would also like to thank Acting Commissioner Nucci, Deputy Commissioner McCoy, Assistant Commissioner Linda Holman, and Director Emily Bissett for their endless support. And of course, none of this would be possible without the leadership and dedication of Mary, who I am privileged to call my colleague and friend. Before I get started, I'd also like to thank the family and friends of the graduates. The love and support that you give to these men gives them the focus and the perseverance that they need to accomplish the goals that they have set for themselves. I know firsthand how difficult it can be to achieve an academic goal under the confines of the prison system, and had it not been for the support of my family and friends, I would have not reached my academic goals. I've been home for three years after serving seven plus years in various state facilities, some of them being where I spent most of my time. My road, like many of you, was an unfortunate and difficult one. I come from a good home with good parents. I had a great job, a professional career, and the American dream was well within my grasp. Yet, I wasn't content with that. I had three young kids to help raise and support, and a loving wife who would do anything for our family, but my focus was on making money. That was my focus and drive every day. This drive for money led me to become part of an illegal organization that made millions of dollars. The choices I made took me down a road that cost me everything and led me to an eight to 24 year prison term. Before my incarceration, I had no criminal record of any kind. My wife and I were both employed full time she worked in hospital administration until the birth of our son in 2002. And I was a full-time operator and nurse and orthopedic equipment manager. I was also a part-time procurement technician for a human tissue bank. Although I was young, I had an excellent reputation. I was a quick learner and a hard worker. It was around this time that I was offered an interview with a physician who was starting his own procurement agency. He had offered me steady work, matched my salary, and offered me an incentive program. When I moved into this job, everything went wrong. The owner of this company depended on me for everything, and I helped him open his business office, a lab, set up his equipment, and ensured materials inventory. He was smart, successful, and seemingly rich. At first, things seemed fine, but soon after, I saw things were wrong. I asked and received answers that didn't feel right. I began to compromise who I was and what I believed to keep an increasing income, attention, and success. I stopped asking questions and mostly pretended that things did not happen. Within a couple of years of employment, my boss was arrested and the company was shut down. For a long time, I fought the charges. I didn't want to admit to myself, my wife, my family, and my lawyer that I could be part of what happened. I had convinced myself that lack of intent and denial was innocence. After a couple of years in prison, I realized that having money and almost material items wasn't the best feeling in the world. The best feeling in the world was having my freedom, having a choice in when and what I'm doing in my day, taking a ride in my car, having a good meal, wearing what I want, and being with my family, that was the best feeling in the world. I can honestly say that I made the best of my time inside. I knew that I had to take advantage of any and every opportunity I had to set my life back on track. I became a certified molder, and soon after that, I started in the college program. Hudson Lake gave me the hope and sense of purpose that I needed to get through the day. Many obstacles await you upon release. You may find that employers are willing to give you a second chance to prove yourself and how it may be an issue for some of you. I've personally experienced the struggles of going to school while in prison, but every one of those struggles was worth the accomplishment of getting a better education while I was in, and it also prepared me for the obstacles that I knew I would face upon release. I feel fortunate that my education has allowed me to give back and participate in such meaningful work. The degree that I earned here afforded me the opportunity to now touch the lives of 
countless individuals facing many of the same struggles I once went through. As the academic coordinator for Hudson Lakes College Program at Green Correctional Facility, I work every day to help share the incredible gift of education with the men there. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to speak at a conference in Wyoming about our work, about what makes quality prison education programming, and about how to effectively run and manage a college prison program site. And what I spoke about, what I always speak about when I have the opportunity to speak about the field throughout the country, were my classes at Sullivan and my classmates. The culture in men's prisons is often one that promotes individuality and privacy and celebrates toughness. I witnessed firsthand how the college program breaks down those walls and can allow real bonds between students to form and flourish. In my experience, it takes a couple of semesters for students to feel comfortable and for the student to the community to come together. During my first semester, no one would even talk to each other. But midway through the second semester, it was an entirely different feeling. People were building off each other, connecting in the classroom and outside the classroom. The shift was larger due to the fact that my cohort was allowed to have our own math study halls on Saturday afternoons. One of my classmates, who was far more advanced in math, led our studies. Within weeks of us meeting in this study group, our classroom culture started to evolve. We became more mindful of each other, and we all agreed that we would not move on in the curriculum to a study group until we were confident that we were ready to move on as a team. This sense of community and accountability for each other and our program spread into our housing units. We soon found ourselves making plans to spend our recreation time studying, brainstorming together, as well as critiquing each other's papers for other courses. Now as a coordinator of a program, I can only hope that my students feel the same connection to each other and sense of accountability to the program as I did. You guys graduating today are the leaders of this program and this community. You may never fully know the impact you have had on one another. Today, you guys have taken another step in the right direction. A new direction that you control and one that can never be taken away from you. We all make bad decisions in life. Once, once we wish, we can take back. Our past doesn't have to determine who we are or what we choose to do as long as we choose to move in the right direction. It's up to you to rewrite the narrative in your story. Take advantage of all that's being offered to you. Put yourself in a position to overcome your past decisions and society's label of ex -comment. Again, I thank you for your attention and for allowing me to share with you all. And I thank you for upholding the trailblazing excellence that was put forth by the first graduated cohort in this facility, Cohort 1. Congratulations for again, guys.
that's run, staff, and coordinated by formerly incarcerated people. You're part of that team, and now St. Thomas is as well. And for those colleges that don't want to be a part of this work, they're missing out, because this is an incredible opportunity for both of us to grow. And I thank from the bottom of my heart what you guys have been doing. Stay
possibilities of doing a college program in, in a correctional facility. Um, there are weeks when I talk with Mary for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 90 minutes to figure things out. Um, I'm sure you know what I'm going to say, but this program would not exist without Mary. Um, I think we've learned a lot from each other, and that said, I feel that Stack and Hudson Link have a great partnership now and for the future. Um, the students in my spring class taught me a little concept that they use called positive fire. Yep. It's such a fitting concept to apply to all of us involved in organizing, in teaching, in learning. Um, we have brought, I think, and will continue to bring our positive fire to this bachelor's program. Thank you so much. I know I did not attend college until I came to prison, but I did go to college after prison. And I will just say that my college experience after I left prison was not what it was in prison. What you guys have created here, this community, this group dynamics, is incredible. Running a college program on any campus is tricky. Running it in a master's degree prison is a whole new definition. And I just want to ask the provost to come up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's a name for the randomness that got Stacy to do this work. That word is fate. Uh, so thanks and, and congratulations to all of you and to all of your families uh, for all the hard work and support that got us here today. I just want to say a few remarks before we get to the dinner behind us at the table. That's the main course. Uh, let me start with a, a mundane point. All colleges have a mission statement. And all colleges have an accreditation body. So we are in business because there's this group that lets us be in business, right? And it's a lot of paperwork. But one of the things they care about is, are you doing your mission? Do you have a sense of purpose? And do you pay attention to it? And I'll admit, I thought we did a pretty good job of that until the day three professors came into my office and said, there's this correctional facility upstate, and they want to have a two-year finishing program for their associate's program. And I thought, well, that's something we don't do, right? We have, that is not part of what we've done. So we talked it through, and it just seemed from the beginning, it was such a fit. Look, when you work at a college, you get used to, and the president's here, she'll nod her head. You get used to hearing the word no, right? Can I have more money for this? Can I have more money? No. This had yes all the way through. There was no one on our campus that said, Really? You want to do that? This was a yes. I've never seen a, a, a program or an idea go through so quickly, go through the process so quickly. Uh, and that was names we've already heard. Ellen Shyatt is, is here somewhere. Ellen brought this to us with Barbara Yance and Stacy Sewell, uh, and that's why we're here today. I offer my thanks as well to Dr. Fitzpatrick and Sister Peggy Scarano and the rest of the Board of Trustees represented by Kevin uh, Helen and, and uh, Sister Peggy. Sister Peggy, by the way, was the first person I told this to on the board because I said, listen, here's an idea and I want you to help me. And I think it went something like this. I think you said something like, a program in an institution in a prison? Well, I know who would support that, Jesus. So. <laughs> Sister Peggy's part of a group of women called the Dominican Sisters of Spark Hill. They started the college in 1952 uh, to teach their own members how to be better teachers. But once the college opened in the 1960s, the college opened its doors to men and women of all faiths. And the sisters remembered that they had another important mission, and that's the mission to educate all people equally. With access to education, no matter who you are, no matter what your background, and no matter where you came from. The sisters see education as an act of empowerment, so much so that education is one of their five key ministries. So when, it's no surprise that when this idea surfaced, it went from idea to reality as fast as anything I've ever seen. I also want to thank Mary Donnelly 
And I know she spends a lot of time, Stacy's office is right across from mine on campus, so I know she's on the phone a lot with, with Barry, and frequently emails and questions and things come up, and they handle it all really well. I want to thank Lee for that wonderful commencement address. That was terrific. Uh, and I also want to thank the, uh, Dr. Margaret Fitzpatrick, and I want to thank all of the professors who are here, who drive up here, and for making their work a pleasure. I'm telling you, I've been working in higher education for 35 years. I've never seen professors as happy as when they are coming back from teaching here. There's, there's just something that they get here that they don't get anywhere else. What I hear over and over from the faculty is that working with you guys as students engages and stretches them in ways that don't always happen when they teach on our main campus. You're actively involved in the work of the class. You ask questions that make the discussions work and take them to new levels. In short, teaching here reminds them why they became professors in the first place to work with students to create new ways to understand the world. And that is the essence of a college education. As for a backup of this point, I'm gonna quote two of my favorite American philosophers. The first is W.E.B. Du Bois, the first African American to receive a PhD from Harvard University. These ideas are about 120 years old, but they're relevant for us. Du Bois was defending the value of education in a world that was pushing students away from the liberal arts and into vocational training only. He spent his life reminding people of the, of the intangible value of an education, saying the function of a university is not simply to teach breadwinning or to furnish teachers for the public schools or to be the center of a polite society. It is, above all, to be the organ of that fine adjustment between real life and the growing knowledge of life an adjustment which forms the secret of civilization. That is, to Du Bois, education unlocks the secret of civilization by showing us how to define it for ourselves in our own context. Du Bois thought that denying this kind of education to people by assuming they only wanted a career or a blue collar job was to heap more oppression onto people already burdened by oppression. He felt that leaving people in ignorance was not only a danger to the individual, but to our culture as a whole. Either, he said in his most famous quote, either the United States will destroy ignorance or ignorance will destroy the United States. Another favorite of mine is Ralph Waldo Emerson. And in the 19th century, he said, colleges have their indispensable office to teach elements, but they only serve us when they teach us not to drill, but to create. For Emerson, college education is a reinvention of the self and it's only judged in accordance with the degree to which you are willing and able to create a new knowledge for your own particular time and place. His famous quote is, each generation must write its own books. The only reason we read books of the past is to create books that fit our time, the times in which we live. So we at St. Thomas Aquinas College hope that in some small way, we continue this tradition of education as a means to gain higher access to the self, to a better understanding of the world. We hope you understand that the degrees you're awarded today will help you write your own books for your own time. So congratulations to today's graduates. You're the latest to join thousands of our alumni across New York and the United States. And we're proud of all of you, and we're very glad to have you as members of our family. Thank you. Upon the candidates, Dr. Margaret Fitzpatrick will preside. It is my distinct privilege to present the candidates of the class of 2019. These students have been certified by the registrar and the faculty as having completed all the requirements as established by the State of New York for awarding the degree of Bachelor of Science with a major in Social Sciences. Graduates, as I read your name, please come forward to receive your degree. Ishan Amadovar.
Lost Foot Media.
as president by the Board of Trustees of St. Thomas Aquinas College and in accordance with the regulations of the Board of Regents of the University of the State of New York, I confer upon you the degree to which your successful completion of the prescribed course of study entitles you, and I bestow on you all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that everyone is enjoying the celebration taking place here today. I would like to begin by saying thank you to the Department of Corrections for permitting us this opportunity to celebrate the completion of the very first Bachelor of Science graduation here at Sullivan. From St. Thomas Aquinas College, with the support of Hudson Lake for Higher Education and the benevolent instruction of St. Thomas Aquinas College itself. I would like to thank the executive team here at Sullivan for their individual efforts, some of which many of us are not always aware of. In particular, I would like to express my gratitude to Superintendent Kaiser for his unwavering for his unwavering support of our efforts and for his continued work to ensure the success of this program. To DSS Simple for your oversight of security concerns and the availability of space for our educational endeavor. And to DSP Justiniano for his continuing work in keeping the running of our program as smooth as possible. You have our sincere thanks for giving your time and effort and for placing us in a position to pursue better lives and a more fulfilling future as graduates of your prestigious institution of higher learning. To Hudson Lake, namely Sean Pinker, the Executive Director. <laughs> Brian Fisher, the former Commissioner of Corrections and an avid supporter of prison. President of the Hudson Lake Board of Directors. Our gratitude is best demonstrated to you by the number of men here today, successful in their journey toward becoming more capable individuals moving forward. Their success reflects your efforts on our behalf. To Mary Donald, there are no words possible to express the appreciation for you here at this gymnasium. You have worked tirelessly and quietly to see to it that these men could have the possibility of achieving success of this nature. First an associate's degree, and then a bachelor's degree. You have paved the way forward, doing anything and everything within your power to open doors that most of us had not even thought to see. Whether it is obvious to you or not, there is no denying the magnitude of your importance to each and every one of us, and never doubt it. Between the demands and the requirements of state mandates and the difficulty of being separated from their loved ones, each and every one of these individuals survived and thrived, completing this program in just 18 months. They did this when many people would have felt justified in buckling under the weight of the situation. As a group, these men are an example of what can be done regardless of the obstacle before you. They are, as a cohort and as individuals, the very gold standard of education in a prison environment. The example set is the inspiration and an encouragement to any and every person wishing to follow in their footsteps. The ability to question our ability has been put to rest. Bachelor's cohort one has raised the bar and they have set the standard. They have demanded better from everyone who comes next. And we are grateful for the challenge. As underclassmen, we are hopeful of being worthy of one day standing in your shoes, quite possibly claiming to have lived up to the example you set for us. What we see before us today is a collection of individuals who have the challenge of success 
was not a deterrent from achievement, but a motivation towards success. I am humbled by their drive. The pride in this gymnasium today is possible because of their sacrifice. The families, friends, and loved ones here today are celebrating that pride because of the unparagoned accomplishment achieved by this gold standard group of men. Your example has laid the foundation for each cohort that follows. More importantly, your example has shown that you are truly capable of everything you put your mind to. Moving forward, I believe that you will continue to lead by example for your fellow students, for your families, for the communities to which you will be returning. The world will be a better place because of your commitment to a better tomorrow. Do not let this be the final chapter on your journey. Let this be the beginning of a better tomorrow. Not just for yourselves, but for those of us here today who know the magnitude of what your graduation really means. Thank you for your success. Sincerely, thank you for showing everyone that a confined body can never confine the mind, nor the spirit, nor the soul of the human being, so long as we are willing to reach for the heavens, even while overcoming the powers of hell. Congratulations, and the best of luck to all. Oh, my peers. Oh. 
I thank you for blessing me with such an opportunity that I was able to complete satisfactorily. I'm glad you put something within my means that I could have a purpose, that I could have a direction, that I could fulfill a goal. I thank you all. Thank you very much. program would not have 
got them off the ground. We talk constantly. She has become more than, than a mentor. I consider her a close friend, and I'd like to present this certificate of recognition and appreciation for outstanding generosity and dedication to the Hudson Link Program and the Men of Bachelor of Science Cohort 1 to Stacy Simmel. Today we would like to thank someone who works tirelessly uh, for the students, professors, and the coordinators of the Hudson Lake Program. Thank you for all you do for us. Uh, and I would like to award this certificate of excellence to Ms. Smith. This award is being presented to a person who supports and encourages both students and married. He has been a true gift to the Hudson Link program. We would like to say a special thanks to um, Deb.
Okay, so this is in the form of a letter. Because if I could write to you, this is exactly what I would say. But I'm an inside volunteer, so I can't. So I'm going to say it out loud. Dear Bachelor of Science Cohort 1, I feel like a mother watching her firstborn leaving the nest. There's an emptiness in my heart, but there's also an excitement in watching you all grow and move forward with your lives. Nine years ago, I came to Sullivan hoping to get a cohort of men through an associate's program. It was a small pilot program of 22 men. One of them is right in this group. Many people thought that the program at Sullivan was not sustainable because it was such a small facility. I think those people are few and far between them. Hudson Link is now completing the first ever bachelor program and starting cohort nine of the associate program this September. You should know that from the moment I walked through the front gate, I knew this was where I belonged. When I saw the eagerness with which you men wanted to learn, the genuine gratitude you had for your professors, and respect you have shown me, I knew that this was meant to be. You have all given me so very much. When I walk into the facility, I can't make it up to the North Complex without meeting a number of you and getting, good morning, how are you, how's your day? I start my day every day smiling, and that is, you can't beat that. That's a wonderful gift. I am a better person because of all of you. You have taught me perseverance. You have shown me how to never give up. You give me an education while sitting in the computer lab and listening to you all discuss the papers or what Dr. Pratt wanted you to do or how Megan DeWitt's math problem was like so crazy hard. My clerks, Mr. Fitzgerald and Mr. McGurk, are a constant source of laughter and encouragement, not always in that order. Some of the best years of my life have been spent here. Don't get me wrong. Hopefully I'll be here for some time to come. But I may not have the interaction with all of you that we have shared. So I believe you should let people know how you feel before it's too late. Your family and friends should know that you have devoted all your time to this education. Some people think you are receiving a free college education, but I know. I know the evenings that you spent up studying, the FRPs you didn't schedule, the hot classrooms you sat in all summer long, the cold classrooms in the winter, people, walk, people watching, making sure you don't mess up. You had to do things that while they did not financially cost you, they cost you. How about the work you had to do during the winter semester when you were taking classes five days a week for three to four weeks, all the while the rest of the college program were on break. I bet you love that one. Make no mistake, you did invest in your education with hard work, discipline, and your registration fees. You did this. You earned this degree, and I am so very proud of each one of you. I will miss you. Wherever your journey takes you, remember that Hudson Link is there for you. You have my promise. If you ever need Hudson Link while I am still here, get word to me and I will reach out for you. Each one of you have shown me the strength and character that had been buried deep inside of you for years. Many of you didn't know you were capable of achieving a higher education. But when you received your first grade, and not only did you pass, but you excelled, there was a moment when you knew what I have always known. You are special. 
You are more than your past. You are the future. When we hear the words the future, we think of children. But you are grown men who have gone through some very traumatic experiences. You have done things you will forever be remorseful for. But that is not who you are today. Today, you are college graduates. Today, you are critical thinkers. Today, you are better, more prepared for the outside world. Today is your day. This room is filled with people who believe in you and want you to succeed. You did not get here by yourself. There were so many people behind the scenes that were supporting you funders for the program, college administrators, professors, Sean Pika and the, admin, and the men and women of the Hudson Lake staff, Doc's administration here at Sullivan and, and in Albany, the list goes on and on. Every single person who meets you comes away with a new appreciation of you. Suddenly there is a better understanding of who you are and what you are capable of doing. Many times I am told that you men are more engaging, more thoughtful, more challenging than the students our professors meet on a traditional campus. I am not surprised at all. I think sometimes the professors or administrators get tired of me singing your praises, but it's not long before they see what I say. Some of you will be moving on soon. Some of you will go home and some to different facilities. But you will never be alone. You will always be a part of the Hudson Lake family. And you will always have a place in my heart. So as you graduate, remember what you have learned. Think before talking or acting. Not everything is as it seems. And you don't have to react to every situation. Remember that you have set an example for many, and they are going to be following your lead. Thank you. Thank you for being you, for teaching me so much, for the respect and the insight you have all given me. As I said to my children when they left home, don't be a stranger. Remember you are still my guys, and I won't forget you. Don't forget what you have accomplished here. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Thank you very much.
Congratulations, class of 2019. 